like going to buy Gucci belts. So like <laughs> Gucci belt was the paycheck. It's just sell weed, did a lot of drugs, did a lot of cocaine. Addiction is a complex psychological, physiological process which manifests in any behavior that a person enjoys, finds relief in, and therefore craves in the short term, but suffers negative consequences in the long term. Look for love outside my house, ruining someone's life, ruining someone's household, mm -hmm. and it didn't feel good for me. Relationship with your mom now at this stage in your life. Encouraging me is kind of fucked up. Like, I feel like I'm gonna cry right now. You'll feel judged by like actually doing what you wanna do, but you have to do things to heal yourself. When you're like praying, you're talking to God. When you're meditating, you're listening to God. I hate to say it, but it's a fact. Like my dick wasn't working properly without alcohol and drugs. I didn't even know if semen retention would, would actually cure me from the inside out. People this, I, I never told no one this actually. So it's an exclusive to Black, <laughs> Black and Blue Rich podcast. Yes. That night after I took my shahada, and you know, I reverted back to Islam. Really? My name is Jordan Walton, aka Compound Interest, formerly known as Banks360, and we are here at Back is the New Rich podcast. Tune in. Wow, first of all, I felt like that was a, you did your own intro. That was crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yo, so honestly, um, thank you for being here. Uh, it's been a long time coming for this podcast. I remember uh, I, we met at the 19 Keys event, right? The Where he was doing a little monologue for his uh, social media. Yeah, social media. <laughs> yeah, that was really dope. And I seen you, I was like, man, this is the guy. I got to really <laughs> connect with you and... God brought us together. A hundred percent. And you know what the crazy thing is? Because when I seen you there, I seen you, you looked at me and I was like, do I know this guy? Like, where do I know this guy from? Like, I haven't seen you before, but then you came up to me and be like, yo, like, I know the podcast. So I'm like, oh, okay, like, you know, that means a lot that someone actually was um, humble enough to like say, you know what? I recognize your work, you know, because there's a lot of people that may see you and recognize your work, but will never say anything. So it was a uh, social proof that uh, that this thing is doing well. So I uh, thank you for that. Yeah, I appreciate that, man. I appreciate you having me here today, too. You know, it's a full circle and let's get it going. So let people know what you're doing right now and what type of journey that you're on. Well, I'm on a journey of soul evolution, of rediscovering who I truly am. And um, I'm using my voice, I'm using my body, my mind, myself as an example to be a leader for the youth and um, trying to show them you don't have to follow the crowd and you could do whatever you want to do as long as you feel secure about yourself. But feeling secure about yourself is about building yourself up and reprogramming your mind. Mm -hmm. and not being afraid of actually being who you truly meant to be nice so i want i want to talk about what you're doing about right now but i want to bring it back to who the old jordan was all yeah. right so we're gonna go back to about like 18 years old 16 years old what was going on in those times 16 years old um i was listening to a, a lot of rap music um a lot of like dark music i was listening to a lot of shine and oh, um, <laughs> I really wanted to be in the streets bad, you mm -hmm. know, and I feel like um, I feel like because I come from a single parent home, I didn't have that really family feeling in my household. So I always looked for love outside my house with my peers, with my environment. But that environment didn't have the right setting for me for me to grow. So it brought me down roads that I had to learn my own learning lessons in life. So Jordan, growing up, I was named like Big J. I used to sell weed. I did a lot of drugs. I did a lot of cocaine. I robbed a lot of people. And I'm just, I had to figure out who I wanted to be as I grew up. And that's, that's not the life I was trying to project as I grew older. Mm -hmm. So now I was just like using my voice and talking about those examples because I talk about who I was. I don't really talk about who I am. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that's to me that's what's most important because everybody goes through their own stuff like for, even for me like i've made a couple 360 changes right yeah and uh, i feel like i'm on this journey of healing just like you are and um i feel like it's important to talk about like you just said who you are right now but i do want to get into some things like just going through the mindset of where the change started right so you said that you were uh, addicted before you were robbing people you even selling drugs too yeah so what was the initial like wow moment that you were like you know what jordan like 
if I end, if I keep doing this, I might end up dead. Like, what was that? What was that conversation like with yourself? Um, I remember like actually being like 22, 23 and accepting like jail and death as my reality. Wow. You know, wow, that's I deep. really, really, I thought that was my outcomes, my two outcomes in life. I was, I loved the power of money mm-hmm. and money actually never brought me any happiness in my life, you know, but I had a child when I was 23 years old. His son, his name's Nathan. And I just looked at my son and I wanted to be the father I never had. Mm-hmm. And that was my moment. And I started making small incremental changes within my life. Like stopped when I was 23, that's when I stopped selling weed, Okay, you know? And I was like a big time hustler. A lot of my friends asked me how I was able to do it, but then I had to really learn how to live without money again. You what know? does that mean? Like, cause um, when you're hustling, you have an abundance of money. You know, there's money everywhere. You know, mm-hmm. you can actually do whatever you want to do. And so I had no value of money, you know? Spending it how you want to, yes. doing whatever you want to. Exactly. So now I was making maybe like, say for instance, 2500 a week to working $16 an hour. <laughs> yeah. Your life is going to go, your life is going to go crazy because in your mind, you're accustomed to spending whatever you want, but now you're living on a budget, mm-hmm. you know? So I had to learn. I still haven't really learned how to live within my own means yet because mm-hmm. I was hustling for from when I was very young. So stuff like that. And I don't even know over the question. Yeah, to. I, I, to be honest, I can relate to you because even before this, like, I'm not sure if you've seen the post, like I was hustling as well. Yeah. So the lifestyle change, I'm still figuring it out how to spend properly how to manage my money in a different way because it doesn't come in like how it used to yeah and uh, it's been tough it's been tough like i went cold for me i went cold turkey uh when the pandemic started yeah and cold turkey is rough yeah it's rough. <laughs> it really rough you know like just making a certain amount of money and expecting like nice things like and I will, I'll be very honest with you. I was that guy that, um, were a designer. I got a BMW when I was way too, it was just way too early for those type of purchases, yeah. right? Just spending my money stupidly. And yeah, so I can definitely relate when it comes to, um, living that life and how to spend money. Exactly. Right. Cause I run from like going to buy Gucci belts Yo, to like my me. Gucci belt, the Gucci belt was the paycheck. And yeah. I'm like, I cannot afford this Gucci belt no more. Yeah. So I had to learn that lesson. It was, it was hard, but I feel like that's why people don't stop hustling because they can't see the other side. 100%. You know? And it's very hard to like come to terms with not having whatever you want, whenever you want. And you're watching your peers do whatever they want. Mm-hmm. But you have to have faith in God and know there's a purpose for you. And you have to lead yourself by because You have to lead by example. 100%. So what would what advice would you have for necess- like maybe hustlers that are still doing their thing, but they're thinking about the transition? Would you advise them to go cold turkey or slowly cut it off? I would say slowly cut it off because um, actually I would say do a cold turkey because at the end of the day, you're going to have to pay for the repercussions of messing with um, people's mental state of mind, you know, and that's something I can no longer participate in, um, knowing I'm ruining someone's life, ruining someone's household, mm-hmm. and it didn't feel good for me. And I felt like even though I continue to do drugs, I'd only want to harm myself. I didn't want to harm so other self-inflicted. people. Yeah, self-inflicted trauma, you know. Instead of actually, because you don't know if you're going to be selling drugs to someone's, someone else and they're going to overdose. Mm-hmm. And that'll well, be their last hit. Yeah, that'll be their last hit. And then all that karma comes on to you. Mm-hmm. You're going to have to suffer through through their pain, through yourself, through your soul. And it's not going to be nice. So I feel like no one should be hustling, selling drugs, but that's just the, the media. Yeah, that's just the reality. You know, we're out here in survival mode mm-hmm. as as a society right so if we don't want it as a as a young human being if i didn't have it i would just take it from you true you know and i didn't really care about the repercussions but now it's kind of like now i'm paying the karma for all those years and i'm trying to like say i'm trying to do better but things are not progressing the way i want them to as fast as i want to Mm. because i think i'm on a straight path but it's like imagine you had a you had to pay for all that karma for 10 years straight that you yeah. did your bad stuff. Yeah. Yeah. God's not, God's not going to give you your blessings the way you perceive it. He's going to test you. Right? Yeah. A hundred percent. So 
that man that even has me reflecting on my own life because sometimes i get frustrated even with like the podcast this journey i'm like well i'm doing good now like come on like well, I, I need to see like the fruits of my labor sooner but it doesn't work like that especially all the stuff that i've done before so i think that's a super good point like maybe it's like the karma reaction to what we've done right exactly right the karma and you, you're at to pay your karma you have to pay your debt to society and you gotta pay your debt to yourself and like me and you are just being an example for the black community the black youth and they need people like me and you to stand up, to be strong, to be the voice, because, and there are a lot of households, they don't have that, right? 100%. So, I was going through your Instagram, and I, I'll never forget, because I we just met, yeah. but I never forget when I seen one of your stories, and I seen the old you, and you're holding a bottle, and how skinny you were compared to now. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. couldn't believe that was you. Yeah. Explain like the transition to ch transform your body because you're in shape now you're in the gym like you just said a, a couple minutes when we're talking uh off cam seven days a week explain the importance of getting in the gym for your healing journey oh man getting in the gym was like i felt like the only way your body is going to connect to your mind if your body is at a high physical shape you know a, a, a high physical yeah shape to perform at a good pace for yourself but I remember being that with a big being like 160 pounds. Yeah. And um, in my mind, I was used to playing basketball at a high level. And yeah. one time I went to a community center. I went to play basketball. And after like five, 10 runs, maybe like five runs, You're I was done. throwing up. Wow. And I was just like, this is not who I'm meant to be. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I got to get back in the gym for real because I know how it feels to have your body at the top level as an athlete. And like where I was just like throwing up after just playing basketball is not a good feeling. So that was your sign to like, you know what, Jordan, I can't get my shit together. Yeah. So, sorry, not to cut you off. How long did it take for that body transformation? It took a while because um, I was going back and forth, right? Because I was hiding a bad drug addiction on the low. Mm. So I'd always like work out for like two months and do and then fuck off or do drugs for like six months straight. Yeah. You know, but I was very good at hiding my addiction until my addiction ate actually ate me from the inside out to the point i was actually throwing up stomach acid for like eight hours every time what i drank the hell that's yeah. crazy and that's from excessive drinking and uh doing the other drugs too right yeah so you just mentioned a um an important part like you were like a silent like you were abusing drugs silently yeah did you th do you think anybody knew or they weren't just approaching you about it or like what was going on there um I remember one time, actually, uh, I did, like, probably drugs all whole night, and my brother knocked on the door, and I still had cocaine in my nose. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> and then he called me after, and he's like, yo, what the fuck are you doing? And I was just like, yo, man, like, my apologies. I'm just trying to get right. And I was just like, it's just life's hard, man, mm -hmm. you know? And, like, because you feel alone, man, the devil will come for you faster than you believe. 100%, you especially know? at those vulnerable times, too. Yeah. And, like, honestly, my only other friend who knew, like, shout out my friend Lamar, he's the only person who knew, like, who knew me mm -hmm. to do drugs. I do drugs in front of him, and I always felt like I didn't know when my time was going to be up. I thought I was going to overdose and die a long time ago. Yeah. And I was like, man, if I ever die, bro, you're, you're going to be the only person at my funeral saying I know who Jordan was. Yeah. And I yeah. know what he suffered from. And I felt like a lot of people suffer from the same addictions I suffered from. So if I, I'm, I'm just like, I don't care what people think about me. And um, I just use my voice and allow people to grow into their power too. Because mm -hmm. doing drugs is an embarrassment to yourself. And you feel very ashamed, especially when you're doing these things on the low, because you're attracting all those low vibrational people. Mm hmm and you realize they don't care about you or they love you. Mm -hmm. They're just using you to do that. more drugs. <laughs> to do more drugs, yeah. you know? And as soon as the drugs are done, they're gone and you're just in a dark room crying by yourself. Jeez. So what was that process like um, getting, uh, I, for lack of better words, not addicted to drugs? What was the process like? Um, It's actually crazy because um, I'm, I used to sell a lot of weed from my neighborhood. I was like... I was like the guy. I, yeah, I was like <laughs> I was the top boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, one night, um, I went to go sell my friend a half quarter, and he gave me um, a half gram of cocaine. Oh, 
Jeez. you know yeah. and that's how it really started i went to um these buildings i went to my see my friends who did cocaine mm-hmm. and i was just gonna give them the bag for yeah. free you yeah. know yeah and i was just like yo let me just try this yeah. once yeah and that once turned into like friggin' 15 years of straight wow. doing it wow you know because it's the euphoria feeling you know and when you first do the cocaine it's not like um it's not it's not like the last time you do cocaine it's like you actually have a good time. Yeah. It's kind of weird, you yeah. know? And so I actually lo- love doing it yeah. to the point I hated doing it, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. So then let's say, like, for example, I know somebody that is silently suffering, right? And what would you advise, on like, a, like, an acceptable approach to say, hey, bro, like, do you want to get help? Or, like, well, how does that process? What do you think? Um, that process, like, it's gonna be hard because they're gonna feel like you're attacking them, like, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. and you're um, judging them. They're judging them when really you have to be like honest with them and like tell them that you care for them because mm-hmm. you don't want them because that could put someone even a more downward spiral, right? Because they're hiding the addiction and they're ashamed of it, right? So the best way I would be, I'd just be truthful. I see, I watch Intervention so many times. I remember sitting on my couch with my mom watching Intervention. Like I need, I'm the one who needs an intervention. Yeah. But I'll never admit it. So it's just like this guy be kind and be honest with them, but don't be too hard on them. Just tell them like, you know, like you're actually better than the ways you're presenting yourself, and the drugs will eat them from the inside out. So it's a matter if they may want to make the change or. They're just gonna keep on suffering. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, so let's talk about the environment part of things, right? So obviously, you lived a different life before, yeah. and that comes with a certain type of environment. How has that vir- environment changed today? Oh, it's changed like three sixty degrees. I remember growing up, like all my older friends, like I never had real good role models, right? So I played basketball. And you remember, like, going on when you're younger, going on Hooptown GTA, mm-hmm. reading yeah, your top yeah. 25, so you start, know, yeah. stuff like that. But, like, when I was growing up, like, as soon as I get mad, I had friends who would just give me drugs or give me alcohol instead yeah. of, like, actually leading me on that path. And all my friends I grew up with right now, they're either in jail or fighting gun charges or they're, they're addicted to cocaine you know mm-hmm. till this day wow you know wow. so i don't really talk to them i have to love them from a distance because i know we're not the, we're on the same path no more and if you really cared about me you would never even led me down that path that mm-hmm. you were on you would have told me yo bro just play basketball get us out of here but they used me for my for my resources and uh, it's like it's all, it's all good because I had I had my own learning lessons in life. I had to figure it out. But the environment, the people, the music, yeah. everything has changed. Yeah. Like, you know, my whole life has changed yeah. my whole mind. Yeah. So now anytime who has like a bad and anyone who has bad energy, I can sense it. And you don't have to tell me you're doing drugs. I can look into your eyes. You know. I you just know. know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I just I can just read somebody. Yeah. So now it's just really just just separating myself and like, yo, when you're in an environment of 19 keys and these people on a high who hold themselves to a high standard, who have high value in society, not that you want to like emulate them, but you're inspired by them, you 100%. know? And um you want to make your family proud, you want to make your mother proud, you want to make your fa- your mother proud you want to make i want to make my whole family lineage proud yeah, you know? yeah, 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 like yeah. i'm here to leave a dent and i can't do that doing cocaine or being being controlled by any substances mm-hmm. so i watched your first episode of the compound interest right and something that just really touched me is that you you're having a conversation and by the end of it, it was like a conversation with your mom almost, right? Yeah. I'm sure she's seen you go through a lot of stages. How does she feel now and how's the relationship with your mom now at this stage in your life? Um, over the last like year and a half, my me and my mom's relationship has gotten really tight because she watched me suffer, you mm-hmm. know, really bad. And she was really worried about me. Mm-hmm. And she always like encouraging me is kind of fucked up like i feel like i'm gonna cry right now just think about my mom you know mm-hmm. like we've been through so much shit together 
And um, man, last year I was in a very dark place, bro. And my mom, like one of my drawers, seen the cocaine on New Year's. And f- she was worried about me. And I was just like trying to build myself back up. And I told her I was coming and I was going to do this for real. But I just needed to get the rest of that bullshit out of my system, yeah. you know, and just find myself. But now, you know, just growing even just recently quit smoking weed. I just, I just want to make my mom proud, bro. Yeah. You know, like I don't care about nothing else. Yeah. I don't care about the money. I just want to show my mom, like, yo, your son's back, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Um, we're ready to attack the world, whatever comes our way. Like now we're strong and we're ready. Yeah. But like, I don't think no mother deserves to see her son in that state of mind, bro. It's, it's not fair. And as a son, I had to dig down deep, bro, deeper than I ever dug in my life mm-hmm. to be like actually find myself, bro. Cause there's so much, um, there's abundance of women, abundance of drugs. You go out for days, you know, and it just doesn't stop. It doesn't get easier when you get on this path. It actually gets harder, you know, cause they throw more temptations at you. People want you to be like them. They don't understand what the frequency you're on. But yeah, man, I had to do it for my mom for real. My mom deserves the best mm-hmm. and the best son. So you mentioned something that you recently quit smoking weed, right? And I feel like that's a hard thing to do. Personally, I don't smoke, but um, I do know people that are religious smokers, especially of weed, and they I don't think they'll ever I don't even think they think about quitting. Yeah. How's that journey for you? Um, it's been a it's been a crazy journey because I never <laughs> thought I was a religious smoker myself, right? Yeah. So, and um, I had to realize all my trauma stemmed from smoking weed. The sm- smoking weed was a gateway drug to other drugs and opening portals to like other um, entities in my life that actually took control of my mind, right? But quit smoking weed was very hard because I was smoking with the graba. Mm-hmm. So I was like... And, and I was smoking, chest. yeah, and <laughs> chest, oh, I was in smoking since I was in grade eight. I'm Jeez. 33, you yeah, know? Yeah. So, like, it was very hard, very nauseating, cold sweats at night. And I just, you know, my motto is just get 1% better each day. So I try to live by my own, my own words, you know, and just yeah. be an example. And I feel like I deserve a good life. And then, like, honestly, the last time I seen 19 Keys, he told me to pull up to a studio walked into the studio and I was the only person who smoked weed and they're like yo who smoked weed and I was like wow. I did but now I was just like everyone on the next level they have a clear mind mm-hmm. they're not smoking mm-hmm. you know why am I walking in smoking if I'm if I'm being presented these opportunities to be with these high people I need to hold myself to a higher standard to the highest level and really be on my compound interest and not say because I've quit sm- I quit doing cocaine, quit drinking. It's okay to smoke weed. No, we got to elevate to the highest level. Yeah, it all got to go. It all got to go. Wow, bro, that's amazing. And I see that you're um, deeply embedded in your faith. And I think for me personally, that's the most inspiring part of your journey for me personally, just because I'm trying to get there as well. Um, Talk about how you got so deep into your faith. Actually, man, I was like, it was May 7th. 2020 day before my birthday guys. yeah it's like, that's crazy <laughs> so may 8th i my show my friend mahad yeah. you know he helped save my life but it was may 7th i was in a barber shop and um what year sorry 2021 okay and um these two girls called they wanted to have a threesome they wanted to drink do cocaine and then honestly at that point in my life i was done doing drugs and i didn't know because at that point if I take one shot of liquor, I'm throwing up for 10 hours. Wow. It was really bad. So I had to like, I was, they called me and um, they wanted to turn up. And honestly, that night I was doing a haircut. It was probably like nine o'clock at night. I just called my friend Mahad and I'm like, yo, let's go to the mosque. I'm done. Right, random. Yeah. I was supposed to go May 8th on your yeah. birthday. <laughs> you know? But I was like, if I go, if I don't go tonight, I don't know if I'm going to be alive tomorrow, you know? Wow. So I'm like, I need to go tonight and seal my faith with my Lord, you know, and just give myself up to God, 
you know, and really just get on this journey and start praying, start asking for forgiveness. And I remember that night, I, I haven't told a lot of people this. I, I never told no one this, actually. So it's exclusive to Black, <laughs> <laughs> Black and Lit. Blue Ridge podcast. Yes. That night after I took my Shahada, and, you know, I reverted back to Islam, I still went and bought cocaine that night. Really? You know, the devil was trying. That, that was her first temptation. Yeah. That, after it. After, you know, the devil brought me all the way to this guy's house. I bought the cocaine. I came back to my house. It was like at 2.30 in the morning. And I'm like, bro, there's no way I just took my shahada and I'm going to do cocaine. I'm like, I just put it in my drawer. And I ended up doing it after, yeah. you know? Yeah. But like, I just, I was not doing it that night. Yeah. You know, I was like, this is it, you know? And I'm like, after that, like... After you make that change, you could actually feel the energy in the air. Jeez. Like any time, yeah, anytime you do something wrong, you know when you're doing wrong. Yeah. So it was like I just do. I actually probably did like a couple lines, threw the whole bag out, wasted 150 dollars, yeah. and then really you got on my journey with God. You know, started praying a lot, five times a day. You yeah. know, it was nuts. Yeah, because I see you, you pray a lot. You're you're in uh, embedded with nature as well. Yeah. Talk about the nature part because I see you outside a lot, praying a lot, and just you know becoming one with the trees, with the grass, with the with the with the, uh, with the uh, bugs, insects, and it look when you're out there and you record yourself. I'm like, man, this guy is peaceful right now. Yeah, you know, it's just like rediscovering who you truly are, right? Because I wasn't, I was never taught these um these ways of growing up, right? So. A lot of people, Sorry, man. a lot of people, they will judge you. Or like a lot, you'll feel judged by like actually doing what you want to do, but you have to do things to heal yourself, right? And we're not taught certain ways to heal ourselves. And the nature is very healing and going out and just being one with yourself, like meditating. You know, when you're like praying, you're talking to God. When you're meditating, you're listening to God. Oh, you know, I like that. So like, and like, I've I've done so much research, like. We're actually like, we're like a battery, you know, mm -hmm. but we're wearing rubber shoes. So as soon as you take off your shoes and you ground yourself to the earth, it's like, it's like a voltage. Yeah. The, the bot, like all your like negative ions go into the earth and then the earth actually charges you up. Wow. That's amazing. Bro. Yeah. So, so how often do you, are you going on your nature walks or your, your sessions? Actually, I committed the last nine months <laughs> to like, <laughs> I've healed more than I've worked. You know, I've. I took, there's been months, you guys don't even know, I had zero dollars. And I'm, you can't even tell no more if I have zero dollars because I feel like this is the best way for me to move forward with my life. And I truly believe on everything I'm preaching that this is the right way to live your life. And um, yeah, I spent the whole year healing. Like every day, I'm taking time to go to the gym. After I'm done the gym, I'm going outside. I'm grounding myself, setting my intentions to the universe, setting my affirmations, sun glazing. Then I'll come inside. I'm going to the steam room. I do that every day of the week. You know, right. and some people are like, yo, don't you have a job? I'm like, this is my job right now because I've been servicing you guys for the last 33 years of my life. I need to service myself for once. Wow, bro. That is powerful. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> so... Let's talk about compound interest. I'm telling you, every time I'm in the gym, I think about your movement at least <laughs> once. Like if I if I need an extra rep, ah, compound interest. Let's get it. And I, I I see the movement radiating through the city right now, and it's just such a positive movement. I think it makes total sense. But for the people that don't know what compound interest is, can you please explain it? Man, compound interest is really just getting one percent better each day, and um following your dreams, following your goals, following your aspirations, but understanding you have to not leave no stone unturned each day. You have to follow your goals each day. And understanding 1% is better than 2% is better than no percent. You mm -hmm. know, we mm -hmm. want to stay steady at 1% and get better each day. And that's like, honestly, I've got compound interest from being on semen retention. Yeah, yeah. I was going to get into that next. <laughs> you okay. know? So I was just like, I'm just compounding like using my energy yeah. to um, head towards my own goals. And one day I was just like, yo, this is compound interest. <laughs> and then it was crazy because that was last summer. And then um, I, that was last summer. I ended up relapsing, doing drugs after I said I was never going to do drugs again. So last summer I was actually getting ready to prepare to like introduce compound interest. 
and I fell off. So then I had to build myself back again this year. And I'm like, you know what? I'm really just going <laughs> to, this is it. This is compound interest. So yeah, man, it's re- rediscovering who you truly are, finding yourself, loving yourself, healing yourself. And yeah, man, it's just like keeping it going. Yeah. Keeping it going yeah. each day. Cause I, um, there's a book called Atomic Habits mm-hmm. and they talk about compound interest and on the scale of compound interest, like it's all, it's all it looks 1% better each day for like, Say three years on that f- fifth year, it goes poof. Yeah, it flies up. Yeah, you know. So yeah. that's so understanding your, yourself. That actually reminds me of Kobe, right? Um, I was listening to an interview the other day, and he said that um, to get better than his peers by year seven, he would be working out at like four a.m. and then he'll go home or do whatever, and then work out, get a workout out at like 10 and then get a workout in, in the evening he says five years of that he said but i knew that nobody was going to be better than me yeah that's, that's like, compound interest yeah, it's compound <laughs> interest that's the same thing with me because i'm like i'm running every day i know my peers are not doing this and i feel like honestly like next to you you know we are the hardest working young black males in toronto that's pushing positive that's pushing positivity because it's easy to fall into the negative trap of life and going viral for the wrong things. But when you're going against the grain and you're it's pushing that enough. light and you're pushing the knowledge and you're pushing love and you, and that serenity to God, <laughs> it's not it's not going to hit the ears on the masses of that low vibration like, where everyone's like radiating. Yeah. You know, it's only like we're going against the grain. We're finding that one fish in the sea that's going against everyone else, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you mentioned something, semen retention. Yeah. I, well, I've been wanting to get into that <laughs> because, yeah. honestly, I've done it once in my life for it was like five months, yeah. five months. And through that journey for me, that was life-changing, you yeah. know, like where I just didn't, like, I don't know, I just felt restored. How's that? Why did you make that journey and how did it transform you? Well, I made the journey because honestly, like when you do drugs and you're drinking alcohol, you actually ruin your root chakra. And that's where you're like everyone's vibrating. And like I hate to say it, like, but it's a fact. Like my dick wasn't working properly without alcohol and drugs. Wow. You know? I could not get hard in the morning and stuff like that. And um I didn't even know semen retention would would actually cure me from the inside out, you know? So like I don't even know how I even heard about semen <laughs> retention. You know, yeah. I just really started like holding in my energy. And um I remember the first like the first year I did it last year, like every like 30 days, I'd wake up crying, like having these crazy self-realizations. And I could feel the energy start like coming right, like ripping me up, like ripping up my past ways. And like it was it was very powerful, you know. Like you said, you felt very restored. But now, like, I did it again, the seven months. But, like, now, like, since because um, I haven't done drugs, I haven't drank, you know, like. You're at a better place, I'm too, a dude. a better place, yeah, mentally. Like, my shit's actually working. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wow. <laughs> you know? So I'm proud of myself, you know? And, like, there's people out here, and they're using honey packs and buying Viagra, mm-hmm. buying pills from the store. And they can't even get hard regularly because... And man, all that shit is just junk down there now. It's just like your blood is so thick from, from all the trauma you caused yourself, right? Wow, bro, that's crazy. So would you, like, on this path now, would you do it increment- incrementally again? Or do you feel like, okay, like, I'm at this path where I don't really, that part is done? No, I definitely, everyone is a retainer. If you have big aspirations and goals, you got to use the energy from the inside to manifest your life on the outside, mm. right? Because they both they both correlate, right? Yeah. And if you if you're constantly releasing, you have you're depleting your life force energy, and that energy, it, it can actually manifest your goals, and it allows the manifestations to happen faster than actually having no energy, mm. you know and mm. You don't want to give yourself up to the wrong people who have the wrong intention the for you. The energy exchange is yeah, crazy. The energy exchange is crazy because you uh, you start accepting their demons and the people that they've been with. So you want to protect yourself, right? And so when you're when you're on semen retention, it's like you have a shield of God 
around you, you know, and you just you're always just trying to make the right move and make the right play and just follow your heart, you know. Mm -hmm. So hearing your story, it it sounds like like even I can relate to this, like healing is not a linear motion. It's not just like this. It's no. up, down roller coasters, but you're making that compound interest to keep on rising up. Sometimes during your healing journey, obviously you've relapsed a little bit. What keeps you going to be like, you know what? Okay, I relapsed a little bit. Let's keep this going, though. Yeah. Um, just um, the frequency and the vibration of being uh, on simmer retention at, like, six, seven months. When you feel that energy, <laughs> yeah. it's like um, when you have something on your mind, you cannot go to sleep until you complete it. Yeah. You're like, it's impossible. And your, your drive and your, whatever is going on in your body on, like, a cellular structure is going to drive you towards wherever you need to go. And like, honestly, like I have a son, he's nine years old. I haven't seen him in five years. And I remember last year I used to like on, on same retention. I used to pray to my son all the time, every day, you know, and just call his name, Nathan, I'm your father. Nathan, I'm your dad. Cause my son doesn't even know me. Mm -hmm. And then one day I'm walking down queen street and who do I see? I see my son, and I wow. was just like, "Yo, this is a movie, bro." Did you, sorry, I know it's a little bit personal, but did you approach or you just left it? Um, I seen his mother, and I just told him like I told her that like I arrived, and she didn't even know what I'm saying. But uh, I think I arrived, <laughs> <laughs> you know. But then I just like, yo, it was her brother's birthday. I didn't want to interrupt the um the dinner. Yeah. So I just kept it moving. You know, I just looked at my son. He looks just like me. And I was just like, yo, I'm coming. I'm coming for my son. And that's all there really was mm -hmm. to it. So on another level, because my son is still pure and he's nine years old, when I hold my semen in, I feel like I'm closer to my son. Mm -hmm. Even though he doesn't know me, I feel like I could talk to him mm -hmm. and he could hear me. Mm -hmm. And what it sounds like is that Right now, you're doing the work. So when that time comes, you will be ready because kids have questions and yeah. he will probably have questions for you later. But I think this work is just like it's like when Goku was getting ready in the chamber. Like that's what you're doing right now. So you can answer those questions wholeheartedly and he'll see that. Like, you know, like, you know, yo, my dad, like, yo, he he's that guy. Like, you know, he's yeah. been through a lot. And then obviously he'll probably get to know your story. But it just sounds like um, you're preparing for that moment right now. Yeah, I'm definitely preparing for that moment because people will always remember for what you've done to them and how you made them feel. Right. So, you know, I'm sorry to anybody who I've made you feel any way if I made you feel like you're not worthy. But like, yeah, you know, like I never had a father who was like, stable in my life like i mean my father actually closer now that i'm on this journey than we ever been because I, my father actually understands me more than anyone else but like you said i want to be when the time comes i don't want to have people talk on my name no more they can't talk about <laughs> the things i've done mm -hmm. you gotta talk about what i'm doing right now mm -hmm. you know and it's straight greatness yeah 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 wow man that's that's super deep because this is even the first time I'm hearing that you had a son. I never knew. Yeah. Jeez. So uh, do you want more kids or how's that going? Yeah, I definitely want more kids. But, you know, when you have a kid at, child, at 23 and you're selling drugs, you're doing drugs, you know, I didn't want to have another child with someone who doesn't really care about me, you know, because my mm -hmm. child's been held away from me and I'm a good person, you know, and I feel like I should have my child in my life mm -hmm. and my child shouldn't be used upon and against me, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. But it is what it is. It made me a better person. It made me fight for myself. It made me fight for my life, fight for my son, fight for humanity now, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know? So, like, it's all good. But, man, it's just like, like I said, it's, it's a about the journey. It's, it's about the journey and it's having faith in God. Wherever, wherever God wants you to go through, you, get, you have to know you have the strength to bear any of those situations and don't fall back into those old vices because as soon as I fall back or give them something to talk about, Oh, they're going to be on my ass. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. So sometimes I, I believe like we all go through our journey at different times. Right. And sometimes like I'll be on my healing journey and I, I want bro to get on this with me too. Cause I'm like, yo, I'm seeing different things now but they're not there yet, right? And I'm learning to be like, okay, you know what? It's just not their time yet. Yeah. But I used to take that personal. How do you feel? This, 
have you had that type of situation in your life? Oh yeah, especially with my family because my family is like, you know, we're at the bottom. And I'm saying at the bottom of like a life, like you know, we're we're rich in spirit, but you know, I want more than what's been presented for us as a collective whole, mm -hmm. right? So I feel like if we all get on a healing journey and we all focus on as a team, it'll be easier to manifest the life we want together. But a lot of people don't want to face themselves. They're running from themselves, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah, I've got, I even got mad at my mom, you know, like cussed her out. Like, mm -hmm. yo, what are you doing? Like, yeah. get on it. But I have to understand God chose me to um, lead my family and give them the life they want. Even if they don't want to get on a healing journey, I have to be the one to lead by example. Because I got nephews and nieces. I got little, my little brother looking up, to, looking up to me. And I don't want them looking in the wrong way, looking for love anywhere but within themselves you know mm -hmm. and understanding like you know like it's not it's not going to be easy but it's not going to be like it's not going to be hard like as hard as it's going to be mm -hmm. it's going to be easier on yourself if you just get on this journey from your younger and if i lead by example if i'm going to the gym running an hour every day for five weeks maybe if someone will pick up and be like yo let me just run for, <laughs> run for 10 minutes a day yeah you know it's yeah understanding like yo it's just a journey and i can't be too hard on people anymore i just let them do whatever they want to do like even when i see like my friends drinking going out i'm like i even know i know they're killing themselves man if you like it i love it bro <laughs> <laughs> wow okay now i hear that because you know what I, I have a push pull system that i believe in and my friend david told me he's like everybody needs help it's just it's just the facts of life, right? At some point, everyone's going to need help. But if someone wants help, you'll just have to give them a push and yeah. then they'll be on their way. But as soon as you feel that you have to pull yourself, you're going down with them. Yeah. So you got to, you know, just distance yourself and let them come to you when their time's ready. Yeah, you have to let them, you have to let them come, you know, because you, if, you, if you're constantly pushing away of they, they never learned and they're never taught from, from their parents, how can they even hear you? Yeah, they, yeah. You're, you're gonna have you're gonna have to let life take them down their own journey. Let let them experience their own mistakes before they're, they before they come to you and be like, "Yo, Cash, w talk to me more about this healing stuff." Mm -hmm. You it. know, like yeah. now I can't I can't take what life's brought to me anymore. You know, it's like yeah. killing me yeah. from the inside out. So let me just yo let's have a conversation. You know, maybe you can help me, but. You know, if you're a man, don't be too hard on yourself, bro. Like we're all here together and we suffered, we suffer too much, for not help each other out and to grow as a community now, you know, because all these years we're neglecting ourselves, and we're not looking within. We're always looking outside ourselves for external values, whether it's like Gucci, Dior, woman, liquor to make us feel good. The best place you can feel good is like within yourself, you know. But also, okay. I always say, you can't go to the gym and be depressed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's like yeah, yeah. nearly it's impossible. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. you're going to the gym to get better, yeah. you know. And it's like the gym has memory. Every time you go there, it's like you're storing more memory, and it's like the energy is just like it's contagious. Yeah, you know. Yeah. What do you think at this point in your healing journey? You've made crazy transformations. What are your challenges at this point? Um, my challenges is definitely um, my anger, you know, controlling my emotional state of mind because I abused weed for so long. I always ran to it as a vice, right? Mm -hmm. So even this morning, like I went to a good life and I've, I've been running for like an hour each day and like I'm listening to Meek Mill, you know, like I'm rapping like some crazy shit, <laughs> you know, and then this guy told me, yo, this guy wrote a review on me at Good Life, you know, and I'm like, yo, like, you know, it's like 2023, like you, you could have came up to me and be like, yo, brother, you know, can you tone it down a little bit? But now, like. I hate to say it, white people are so damn privileged, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm expressing myself and I'm feeling good about myself and I'm feeling, I'm like, I'm express, like, I feel like a God running for like an hour each day. Yeah. yeah that's hard work. Yeah. I want to see someone do that. And when I'm in those moods, when you're trying to just get over the hour, like, yeah, I'm going to be rapping, but I'm not trying to do it to like make people yeah, feel, intimidate, yeah, you. intimidate yeah. you. I'm just trying to get through this hour. Yeah. Um, Cause like, 
when I do the rest of the workout, I'm not there yelling. Mm -hmm. I'm just chilling. But when, that, when I'm running, I'm just like expressing myself. I'm just getting whatever I need out of me. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's crazy. So what was the review about? Like what? I didn't even read the review. <laughs> they just said like, um, man, just being probably discriminating against uh, me because yeah, the way I right. look yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's all good, you know. Peace upon that guy, you know. I hope he has a better day. <laughs> you know, that's uh, all we could do, you know. But honestly, it frustrated me a lot because I've been going through racism since, <laughs> since I was born, you mm -hmm. know. So it's just like, I hate when people, I, like, I don't know, man. Like, what, as I said, white people, they feel entitled. Like, maybe it's an area I'm in, you know? It's yeah. all good. But, like, I just want to feel like I'm welcomed anywhere I go and I'm not being looked at anywhere, mm -hmm. like, anyway, just because now I have locks and yeah. stuff like that, you yeah. know? Because I fit the demographic of a black person you know like nah i'm a human being mm -hmm. you know i'm i have my soul is light just like yours bro you know fair fair so i know we didn't even get into the barbering stuff because I, I like you you you've uh cut some pretty high profile people i know this is not like this is not what this conversation is about but i think it's important to shed light because that is a craft of yours yeah how long you've been doing it uh, i've been cutting hair for five years now that's, yeah. yeah, that's crazy. I quit five years, and I went to hairstyling school. And I remember, um, I remember going to hairstyling school for the first time, and I still I had that low vibrational state of mind. I'm like, yo, my friends are gonna think I'm gay for doing <laughs> women's hair and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I had the courage to really dig down deep, and like I was learning how to do women's hair, blowouts, yeah, 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 yeah. dye their hair and stuff like that. And then, yeah, I re I went to Market College, and I got on my journey of cutting hair. I think the first year I said I was gonna cut Tory Lanes and I ended up cutting Tory Lanes and Jeez. like my hair, I, I wasn't even not good as a not good at, at, as a barber as I am now, but just man, that's why I say you have to watch your words because everything will manifest. Yeah, you know? wow, bro. So you're still cutting right now, right? Yeah, I'm still cutting right now. I don't have a shop, that's why I don't really promote it, you know. Or I'm not even working at a shop, you know. And um, I'm just waiting for the the stars to align. Right, yeah. and I just want to put myself in the right position to win because I've been really unstable and really unreliable as a barber in the last couple of years just because I've been fighting this addiction, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So now I took the time to actually heal myself and love myself. So now I'm really like, now when I cut here, I'm, I know I'm putting the right energy into someone's crown. Wow, and, then, and that's important, bro. Yeah, <laughs> you know, having the right state of mind, the right thoughts. And I, I can't say I was always doing that before. And I can't say every barber is even doing that right now. Fair. You know, that's why I don't really want to be in other barber shops where there's too much energy. These people are, I'm not, saying, I'm not judging nobody, but a lot of people are just not doing the right things in life. Yeah. And I don't want to be associated to that. I want to build my own brand. And yeah, man, like I just have faith in God and he's just going to take care of me. And if you ever need a haircut, just hit me up and I got <laughs> yeah, you, man. Yeah, yeah, talk your shit. What would you tell your 20-year-old self right now? What would I tell my 20-year-old self, you know? Um, just follow your dreams and um, your friends are not going to be there for you the way you expect them to be. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. Yeah. I don't think that's a personal thing. I feel like, in, in my opinion, like, I have the same friends, some of us since we're five years old, and I understand that sometimes we're going on different paths. We have different interests. And before I would be like, damn, I feel alone. But it's just like, yo, like that's their purpose. And I'm on mine right now. Yeah. And when the stars align again, then we, they align again. And that's it. Yeah. And if they don't, it's okay. Yeah. Just keep it moving, you know, because you want to attract people that I like to attract people I can see myself in. Yes. I like I, when I look at you, I can see myself in you. Yes. When I look at 19 keys, I can see myself in 19 keys. You know, when I look at my friends in my past, they're still stuck on stupid. I hate yeah. to say it, but it's just a matter of fact. You know, yeah. I'm, you're, I'm not going to be caught on slipping. the block, <laughs> you know, yeah. slipping, you know, that's it. You know, like, that's why I say, like, you take, if I take one, one detour, my life can be done. Yeah, exactly. And that's how, like, I'm just walking that line between faith and darkness right now. Yeah, yeah. So these last two questions... I ask everybody on the podcast. And the first one is, what is the best advice that you've received? 
And what is the worst advice you received? And you got you don't have to say any names. Yeah. <laughs> the best um the best advice I could receive uh, the best advice I received I received was from 19 Keys. He said um if you think you're doing too much, you're not doing enough. And that's when I really started pushing like Yo, crazy. That is crazy. That's I, deep right yeah. there. <laughs> and I started like, when he said that to me, because I, I was around 19 keys for two days. I didn't say nothing. And yeah. I have a lot to say. I'm watching every move he makes. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yo, if I if I'm taking it on this level spiritually, how do I materialize my goals physically? He's like, bro, if you think you're not, if you if you think you're doing too much, you're not doing enough. And that's when yeah. I just I was like, yo, I'm putting yeah. everything down. Everyone's throw. I don't even care how you feel no more. You yeah, know? Yeah. So I'm gonna attract the white people who are who need me to be a example, you know, who need me to be that voice for them. And I'm happy I can be a mentor to many people. And now I've I actually help people. I inspire people to follow their own journey in life, their own healing journey. And that's, that's very amazing. dope. That's amazing, bro. Like, honestly, your, your journey's inspiring. Um, like, like I said, like you're one of the only people, I'll be very honest that I watch story every day. I, like, appreciate I, I, that. I have a lot of stories on mute. <laughs> Yours is not on mute, you yeah. know, cause it's inspiring to watch. I see your journey. I see, I see you up. I see you praying. I see you in nature. I see you working out. I see you giving motivation. I now see you doing the podcast. Yeah. That, like, you know, so I see you doing it like just constantly evolving. And that is in inspiring. I take a piece of your movement every day as I go on my own journey. So keep doing what you're doing. But uh, as far as what's the worst advice? The worst <laughs> advice uh, is, um, oh, man, the worst advice I ever got was my, I, I was walking down the street with my friend. And um, he was smoking a cigarette. I was like 14. And um, I was like, yo, bro, I'm done with the cigarettes. He's like, yo, bod my smoke cigarettes. And I was like, <sighs> I just took the cigarette and I kept <laughs> smoking. And that just led me down a dark path of just like not following my heart and following other people's advice and what they want for me, you know? Not, um, that wasn't a true decision for myself. And it's just like, you know, I robbed myself of plenty of years just thinking, I was a bodman for smoking a cigarette, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. thinking I was a bodman for robbing someone or selling drugs. Like that was just, I was like, that's just a dumb decision in life. Wow. So this last question uh, is a little bit of a new segment that I put into this show. So um, one of the last guests, I asked them to ask a question for the next guest. Yeah. And they don't know who it is. They don't know like who was coming on the show. So this was the question. I'm going to read it to you. Oh, this is interesting. It says, what do you believe is or should be the main goal of a man or woman in this physical life? I feel like the main goal for a man and woman, um, for a man. <sighs> oh, <laughs> say that one again. Yeah, okay, the well, main goal. Okay, I'm going to read it again. What do you believe is or should be the main goal of a man or woman in this physical life i feel like a woman and a man they i think they need to heal together and um really just humble themselves and give themselves to god so you guys can have that holy trinity between you yourself and god and you and actually build a real foundation through the lord above and build a solid foundation and manifest love and manifest the family you want in the in the life you envision, so you guys can be happy together. Because I don't think there's no love without God. A hundred percent, I a hundred percent agree, bro. That's a, actually a great answer, to be honest. Um, before we wrap up, let everybody know where they can find you. You'll find me at Compound Interest <laughs> underscore three six nine. You know, I just changed my name from Banks three sixty. I'm leaving the old. I'm coming in with the new. You know, yeah. and um. You can look us up on, on YouTube, Compound Interest, and we're just really taking the rule by storm one day at a time, one week at a time, one month at a time. And it's about to be a real domination But black is the new rich. Uh, I, I respect that, brother. I just want to say thank you for this interview. I know it's a, been a long time coming. And a lot of people, like, I don't think people realize that, like, I, I say it 
sometimes I'd be like, yo, we're going to do an interview, but I just let it, I pray on it, right? Yeah. And I just let it manifest. And some people, I don't know if they take it personal that I'm taking long, but I just wait for the right moment. Yeah. And I just felt that this was the right moment. Today was done. the day because you know what's so crazy? The last time I actually drank alcohol was January 15th. Today is September 15th. So Jeez. it's actually been a full nine months of me healing. Amazing. Congrats. You know? And I'm a nine life path number. So nine oh, is you're nine. I'm 22. Yeah? yeah. Oh, so you're a master number. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, so you know it's like good to tap in on this day, you know, and um man, anyone who's going through a life, you can hit me up, hit up cash, you ever here for 100%. you guys, you know, and let's just keep on doing what we're doing, using our voice and being a good example for the youth, even for the men, even for the women, you know. I hope you guys are all healing, taking time to yourself, taking time to love yourself before you love anyone else. hundred percent. Well, Again, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, you're welcome back anytime yeah. because I know you're, you're you're constantly evolving. So anytime you feel like you have a word and you want to share it on this platform, I yeah. welcome you. We welcome you. Um, and thank you. Appreciate it. No problem. <laughs> I hope to see you on my podcast soon.